Hello guys, it is Gate of Theories here and unfortunately, exactly 10 years ago on this day, the wonderful, amazing actress Elizabeth Sladen tragically died. She was of course best known for playing the iconic role of Sarah Jane Smith on Doctor Who and then, because she was just so brilliant and so popular, she even got her own spin-off show, The Sarah Jane Adventures, which just made everyone love her even more. The show was a major hit and I'm sure everyone who was around when the show was airing had seen it before because like, it was absolutely everywhere, you could not escape it. It ran on for five seasons and managed to even get a spin-off of its own through the Sarah Jane Alien Files, which used to play after the season had aired. Not only did this show bring in so many aliens and characters from Doctor Who, including not one, but two Doctors, but it brought in some new and now iconic ideas to this ever-expanding universe. However, unfortunately due to Elizabeth Sladen's passing, the show was cut short during its fifth season, and rightly so, as no one could ever replace her. And since then, many tributes have gone out to the show and Elizabeth Sladen, from fans and the creators, and the show finally did get a proper ending through the lockdown special airing exactly one year ago today, Farewell Sarah Jane, which saw all of the main characters returning to finally say goodbye to Sarah Jane and Bannerman Road for good. However, there was still so much more this show had to offer. Not only the rest of the season, but several seasons to come. Who knows, it might be still going on today. So, a decade on, I thought I'd pay tribute to my all-time favourite show, and we'd have a look at what might have happened if the show had carried on. For this, I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first part is going to be looking at what the rest of series 5 had in store for us and for the second part all the untold stories the BBC had planned for this remarkable show. And just for reference I am using the Doctor Who magazine special edition The Sarah Jane Companion Volume 3 for my research here. This magazine literally has all the information you could want for all these untold stories so if you want more information go get yourself a copy, I highly recommend it. But for now, sit back and let's discuss what else this show had in store for us. So firstly, if you need a recap since it's been 10 years, here's what the basic premise of the Sarah Jane Adventures was. Sarah Jane, a companion of the third and fourth Doctor, lives at 13 Banman Road. After reuniting with the Doctor in school reunion in Doctor Who, she decides to protect the Earth from an attic in Ealing with her Xylock supercomputer Mr. Smith and K9. She ends up meeting Maria, who lives across the road to her, and together they stop an alien race called the Bane and find Luke, a boy grown from synthesized DNA by the Bane, who Sarah Jane later adopts. Later on at school, they meet Clyde, who joins the gang, then Maria leaves for America in Series 2 with her dad, and the Chandra family moves across the road and Roddy joins the gang. Then, a few seasons later, Luke leaves for university, and we basically get to Season 5 with her new daughter Skye. And also, just to clarify, I'm going to say there are six episodes per season, each split into two parts. I know some people like to call each part an episode, making it 12, but for me, I've always thought of them as six individual episodes split into parts, so that's what I'm going to call it in this video. So, the first three episodes of Season 5 had already been filmed before Elizabeth Sladen's unfortunate passing, but the other three had been planned, but never fully filmed. The beginning of the season began with Sarah Jane getting a baby dropped at her doorstep by the shopkeeper and the captain, who had previously appeared in the story Lost in Time. Sky was created by a bomb by the flesh kind to fight the metal kind, and she had been brought to Sarah Jane for protection from her mother, Miss Myers. Currently, the show never revealed who the shopkeeper and the captain were, but later on, they would have. Sky then joined the Bandman Road gang, and the next two episodes were just your everyday Sarah Jane adventures with the curse of Clyde Langer, following Clyde becoming homeless, and the man who never was, the final episode where Luke returned from the university to meet Sky. That episode's ending, however, was changed to include an emotional montage, which still gets me absolutely every time, of lots of the past episodes of the show spanning every single season in memory of Elizabeth Sladen and the character Sarah Jane. But let's say that that montage never happened, and what would we have had in store for us for the upcoming season? Episode 4 of Season 5 already was an exciting adventure. It was basically everyone's dream, Mr. Smith coming to life and even falling in love. 
It was called Meet Mr. Smith, and a similar episode, The Lost Boy, happened before where the Psylocke was the villain. This isn't exactly the same thing, but it's still very interesting. The episode begins with Sarah Jane, Clyde, Ronnie, and Skye all in the attic, and Mr. Smith sounds the alarms as the stained glass window is shattered in by a small, dirty Sophia covered in spikes which locks onto Mr. Smith's keyboard. Sparks fly, and Mr. Smith urges them to get away when a white light covers them till a figure appears. The man stands in front of Mr. Smith's wall and is dressed in a bowler hat, a pinstripe suit, an umbrella over one arm and a handkerchief in his pocket. Turns out this is Mr. Smith in human form and the Zylot crystal that Mr. Smith originated from had been destroyed. Mr. Smith had absorbed the sphere's mutagen energy that transformed him from the crystal to a human being. Because he's now a human, he suggests the other should call him Smithy, which I think is a brilliant name. He's a very cheeky character with Mr. Smith's sense of humour, but in human form. Smithy and the kids go out to the shops, and he's curious about the world, while Sarah Jane assumes the sphere was deliberate, so she downloads data from unit Skywatch satellites. 24 hours pass, and Sarah Jane has been printing and reading, but she is still nowhere to solving the mystery of how Mr. Smith is now human. Then, Gita decides to invite Sarah Jane with her new friend Smithy and Skye along with Clyde and his mum to the Chandras while Haresh is out. She begins teaching them how to dance and Smithy ends up dancing with Sarah Jane and even Carla, Clyde's mum. Sarah Jane and Gita even call Smithy a ladies man, which I think is hilarious. But when Smithy is about to go to bed for the second night, his left hand briefly begins to crackle with red Zylog energy and a transparent hologram of an alien appears. The alien says, you've got to help me mate, I'm stranded. Sarah Jane comes back to see Smithy, but the alien says, she can't see me, only you can. Sarah Jane leaves and the alien introduces himself as Osmo and explains that the mutagen incident was caused by him. Smithy is the only one who can help him get off Earth as Earth is a level 5 planet and to help him leave Earth he needed Smithy to have a body so he gave Mr. Smith a body. Then once the task is completed, Smithy will become a Zylop again. Osmo needs a teleporter matter relay to get from Alva to Krolka 3, however his broke. There is a replacement 5 miles away in the National History Museum mislabeled as a Mayan artifact. Osmo says he can't tell Sarah Jane as he's kind of been dodging the law and fears she might report him to the Galactic Police. And he cannot get the artifact as his fingerprints would attract the police. So Smithy manages to steal the artifact and he meets Osmo in a warehouse and in return Osmo gives Smithy a small red device which Smithy applies to his hand so he can remain human as he's absolutely loving it. Smithy begins to enjoy human life and decides to even take Carla Langer out for a ride but Clyde begins to get suspicious. Ronnie finds an article about an artifact being stolen from the museum and Clyde and Skye keep looking for facts as they realise how hard life is without their computer Mr. Smith. Smithy then comes to meet them while Ronnie and Clyde are talking to Smithy, Osmo reappears again to him, however of course Ronnie, Clyde and Skye can't actually see Osmo, so Smithy kind of has to respond to both of them with the same answers. Osmo's carbon refractor was overloaded and he needs a diamond from a vault which he has the coordinates of. Smithy refuses to steal a diamond but Osmo blackmails him by revealing that the stabilizer that he gave Smithy to remain human was from a dodgy batch and that Smithy will return into the Zylog tonight. So Smithy ends up complying. In a maximum security area Smithy manages to open the main vault door and open the drawer with the diamond. However, Sarah Jane appears who had tracked Smithy by attaching a bugging device to his tie earlier on. Smithy takes away Sarah Jane's sonic lipstick after Osmo reappears as a hologram and forces Smithy to lock up Sarah Jane in the vault and take the diamond. Sarah Jane insists she can help Mr. Smith but Smithy decides to take the diamond and go to the warehouse. At the warehouse, Smithy is annoyed at Osmo but exchanges the diamond for a new stabilizer so he can remain human. Smithy gives himself a shot to keep him human, but Osmo tells him to wait a few hours before he releases Sarah Jane, so it gives Osmo enough time to escape Earth. Osmo persuades Smithy by saying Sarah Jane owes him for Mr. Smith constantly saving the Earth, so Smithy then walks off back to see Carla and takes her out to dinner. This is literally a story just about Mr. Smith dating someone. 
Meanwhile, Skye, Ronnie, and Clyde begin to worry about what happened to Sarah Jane. Clyde brings up a portable television and sets it up in front of Mr. Smith's old console, and Sky takes charge by saying they need to find Sarah Jane by doing Mr. Smith's job themselves. Back at the vault, Sarah Jane is eventually unlocked from the vault by a guard, and she demands a line to unit, but is instead put in handcuffs, of course, she's in a vault, and they think she's stolen the diamond. At the restaurant, Smithy gets a phone call and it's Osmo yet again and his hand begins lighting up again so he can see the hologram. In frustration, he decides to help Osmo for one last time and Osmo promises it is the last one. However, Carla finds out Smithy has just abandoned her and she calls Clyde and is very upset. Clyde is absolutely furious about this and he demands that they begin looking for Mr. Smith and Sarah Jane when a news report comes up on the television where in the background they can see Sarah Jane's iconic green car. The report says a woman has been arrested on suspicion of stealing a £1.5 million diamond and Sky makes the link to the museum artifact being stolen as well as that they believe Sarah Jane was trying to stop Smithy from stealing them as only a genius would be able to steal such a huge diamond. So they leave for the museum to try and find Sarah Jane and stop whatever Mr. Smith is up to. Back at the warehouse, Smithy's arm keeps lighting up and crackling and Osmo refuses to give him a stabilizing shot unless he helps him. Osmo's teleport cone is broken and needs fixing. While this is happening, Skye begins scanning the museum and finds dimaletic energy and Sarah Jane appears behind them as she'd been released from prison from friends in high places such as UNIT. Eventually, Smithy fixes the teleport cone and Osmo gives him the final stabilizing shot which will make him human forever. He's about to place it on when they see on the screen Sarah Jane and the others who have tracked them down by tracing the dimaletic energy. Smithy runs to find Sarah Jane and says sorry and tries to explain the reasoning for wanting to stay human, but the warehouse begins to shake with noises and a bright light. The gang follow it and find Osmo at his console, turning in his chair to welcome them. Smithy tries to get him, but Osmo uses an invisible force field. Smithy says he's just trying to use a teleport, but Sarah Jane is less convinced. Osmo admits the teleport isn't for getting away from Earth, but bringing others to Earth instead. Sarah Jane gets the sonic lipstick from Smithy and breaks the force field, but Osmo pulls a massive gun on her. However, Smithy uses his last stabilizing shot, which would have made him fully human, on Osmo instead by firing at him and saving the day. He says, I have a primary purpose given to me by Sarah Jane to protect and defend Earth. He then rips the diamond from the teleport unit and throws it to Sarah Jane and alarms sound. He tells Clyde to promise to look after his mother and says that he's glad this happened because life's for living and then he says goodbye and he plunges his hand into the console and energy peaks. This reveals the Xylot crystal on the console and the monitors show Mr. Smith's usual screensaver. Mr. Smith announces the planet is defended and then Osmo gets up as a human and Osmo sees Sky and looks terrified. He says she's the child, the child of the... but Mr. Smith teleports here Osmo away before he can say what he was about to say. And of course that will be revealed later on in the series. Mr. Smith finally returns to the attic as normal and Sarah Jane and Sky return the stolen items. Clyde asks Mr. Smith who Carla is and he begins listing lots of facts such as age and family statistics and he can't remember being in love with her. So to say sorry, Clyde gets some flowers and gets Mr. Smith to record his voice saying goodbye and Carla looks up with tears in her eyes. Honestly, that episode just sounded absolutely amazing and they were actually going to get Alexander Armstrong who plays the voice of Mr. Smith to actually appear as Smithy in the episode. After Meet Mr. Smith would have come the highly anticipated The 13th Floor, a story that not only the makers of the show were excited about, but the fans were as well, as this story is rumoured to have finally secured the Clarny relationship the show had been building towards. Speaking of Clarny, we recently made a fan edit about their relationship and if you want to see it there'll be a link up here to the card but there'll be a link down below in the description, make sure you go and check it out. But anyway, let's talk about the 13th floor. The synopsis of this story starts with a 20 story building where every floor is in darkness apart from floor 18 as two journalists are working late. 
Willard, the trainee junior reporter, and the main reporter, Rick, with a janitor, Arnold, who is cleaning up. Rick goes into the lift to go down to the bottom floor and go home as he has a date with the mayor's office the next day. He watches the floor lights go down and it goes past floor 15, but then flickers between 12 and 14 as there is no floor 30. He jabs at the ground floor button when the doors open and a bright light shines in his face. Then Willard hears a scream from down below, but Arnold carries on cleaning and his alien eyes flicker. Meanwhile, Sarah Jane is beginning to take Ronnie for work experience. So Ronnie is all dressed up smart while Clyde looks a bit saddened by this and him and Skye go to school. Skye senses Clyde is worried about the change coming from Ronnie leaving them all for university and journalism, but Clyde of course denies it. Ronnie goes into the reporting building alone to show her independence and she hears Willard telling another reporter how Rick never showed up for his date and how the police found his abandoned car covered in parking tickets. Willard takes Ronnie in the lift to meet the boss and he says there's no 13th floor simply because the architects have a fear of the number 13 which is a common number to be worried about. Ronnie asks Willard about what he was talking about before and Willard explains what happened to Rick. They then get off the lift and Ronnie bumps into Arnold, then walks away and Arnold's alien eyes flicker. And then, unfortunately, the rest of the story was never actually revealed as to what would happen with Ronnie and the rest of the Sarah Jane Adventures team, which actually drives me insane. Russell T Davies said, We had all the right characters and the right locations in place to tell the 13th floor, meaning if Elizabeth Sladen hadn't died, it would have been perfect to show. However, because of this, they've never actually fully released the full story. It was rumoured Clyde and Ronnie would finally get together in the story, with Russell saying Danny and Angeli loved the 13th floor and were excited by the new potential within their characters. And to top it all off, the episode was potentially going to even include Amy and Rory, as in the 11th Doctor companions. However, the episode concept was still transformed by writer Phil Ford, but instead for the two-part season finale of Wizards vs. Aliens, which took the idea of the 13th floor, but applied it to that setting. It's still worth watching, and actually has the actor Joe Martin in, who of course now plays one of the Doctors, but unfortunately it isn't the same without Clyde and Ronnie in it, and can you imagine if we finally got Kalani to be together? However, apparently there is an extremely rare copy of this script revealed for a Sarah Jane reunion, but I haven't been able to get a copy. So if anyone watching this video actually knows where to get this really rare copy of the 13th floor, I would really appreciate it by letting me know in the comments or direct message us as it is honestly my dream to just fully read this script as it sounds amazing. But following episode five would have come the season finale and my word, it would have been incredible. Just from the title of the story, The Battle of Bannerman Road gives you a clue as to how awesome and epic this finale would have been. However, the final story never actually reached full script, so its storyline and content is difficult to fully define precisely in terms of narrative. Russell T Davies and the production crew had been pondering the future of the show and what would happen and who would actually appear in series six. It was uncertain whether Danny and Angeli, who play Clyde and Ronnie, would actually stay on, sometimes saying they'd leave at the end of Series 5, or even stay on for the first half of Series 6. To persuade them to stay on longer, more mature stories for the actors were being planned, however, the crew knew it wasn't long before they were going to be gone. Russell had been pondering many questions with this story. Would the story write out Clyde and Ronnie? Would we stay in Bannerman Road and bring in the Chandra's new foster son Alfie next year? Or blow up the house and move Sarah Jane to a completely new location? Would this feel like a completely new show by next season? Russell had stated that all sorts of things could have happened in the season finale, but the big revelation that Skye was actually going to be revealed to be the daughter of the trickster, but Skye herself didn't know this. The trickster would have started appearing in her bedroom mirror as a shadow at night, tempting her to with promises and lies. Russell wanted Sarah Jane to take initiative and investigate the peculiar thing about Skye. 
He also wanted Professor Rivers to return, and there was an idea of Sarah Jane taking Skye to the Forest Institute, and the Forest's machines might have enabled the trickster side of Skye to emerge, and this could have left Professor Rivers trapped inside one of her own screens, literally screaming. Then Skye would have reverted back to normal and not have been able to remember anything she'd done, leaving the Professor mysteriously missing. On the other hand, Russell had thought of an epic prologue of Jo Grant returning, where on her travel she breaks into the vaults of an ancient temple in Peru, where it shows ancient pictures of the face of Skye Smith surrounded by runes saying, she will damn us all. Elsewhere, Russell had wanted Clyde and Ronnie's relationship to go even further, with either this story ending with them leaving the show together, or just simply being together and staying on Bannerman Road. Or, maybe Joe's grandson Santiago, who was in Death of the Doctor, could have returned, offered Ronnie to come with him as a travelling journalist, and a story idea could have had an ending with Ronnie about to leave, maybe on like a plane, but Clyde runs up and gets her just before she leaves. This could have been followed into the plot by Joe returning with Santiago when he's going to get Ronnie, and Joe looking absolutely horrified as she sees Skye in person after seeing her on the ruins of this ancient temple. Of course, Sarah Jane would still of course be the centre of all this, and Russell loved the idea of watching Clyde and Ronnie's relationship build through Sarah Jane's perspective, and Sarah Jane would have helped them in all of their decisions. If they were going to leave the show together, it would have been Sarah Jane's biggest sacrifice to push them together so they could be happy, but she would unfortunately be alone. To expand the episode even more, the mysterious shopkeeper would have returned, who sent the characters back in time in series 4 and gave Sky to Sarah Jane in the first place. Turns out, the shopkeeper was another victim of the trickster's plans, and the story would have finally revealed who the shopkeeper was, but because it was never written, Russell D Davies has never actually revealed who this character is, and it actually drives me insane. Miss Myers would have still been Skye's mother, but the trickster would have forced his way into this reality in order to place his essence in the breeding program of Skye. His plan has always been to be able to manifest himself in Sarah Jane's reality, so his plan was literally to be born into the reality through Skye. And Skye being Sarah Jane's daughter, just made his revenge even more personal to Sarah Jane. A few things were fixed however, such as the part 1 cliffhanger where the trickster would have manifested himself inside Skye, breaking Sarah Jane's heart even more than he has done before throughout the show. More than her friend, more than her parents, her lover, but now in her own child. This could have gone as just before Joe can tell Sarah Jane about Skye, and the shopkeeper would have returned, realising his mistakes, and tried to warn Sarah Jane about Skye, but that's when the trickster would have manifested himself inside of her, and it would have been too late. The end of part 1 would have been a huge climax for Sarah Jane, with the trickster and his daughter side by side. Russell wanted this absolutely terrifying image of the trickster onto Skye herself. Those nasty teeth, that awful skin on a child's face, he stated. She would look something like this, which I don't know about you, looks very very creepy. Since Skye had been growing throughout the season, quite literally in episode 1 from a baby to a 12 year old girl, there was also an idea to bring in an older actress to play Skye who was in her 20s and the second part could have had Skye swapping between teenager and adult as she decides which side will win, her trickster side or her love for Sarah Jane. Towards the climax of the final episode, this would have left Sarah Jane to be trapped and lost and helpless like she always is with the trickster, including moments of where it looks like Skye will be good and with Sarah Jane, but it's all just a trick in the end and she's actually with the trickster. Russell was also very tempted to even blow up 13 Bandman Road and Mr. Smith, so there would have been a completely clean slate for series 6. Or even something as crazy as Sarah Jane's house turning into some terrifying trickster tower looming over London with lightning storms surrounding it. The attic would have been filled with cobwebs and became a room suspended in the middle of this extra dimension extrusion. The battlefield for the final showdown. And on the street outside, everyone would gather and return. Clyde, Ronnie, Gita, Haresh, Joe, Santiago, Carla, even Luke and K9 returning, all staring up horrified at this tower, literally an Avengers Endgame level event. 
Who knows, maybe even the Doctor or several Doctors would have returned. And as the walls are tumbling down and it looks like it's the end, the Chandras and Carla would finally have learned what Clyde and Rani had been doing for all of these years. Meanwhile, Sarah Jane and Skye would have been trapped inside the Trickster's Tower, which would have spread its roots, branching out underground to encompass the entire world. Van Min Road would have been completely destroyed, with the full cast staring at it and seeing fire services, police, ambulance, school children, all part of this final showdown, with everyone looking absolutely helpless and staring up at this giant Trickster Tower. And how would Sarah Jane and the gang have saved the day, you might be asking? Well, it would have been Sky's electricity power that they introduced in episode 1. I always wondered why they introduced that, and nice would have been the reason. Clyde and Ronnie would have worked out what had happened to Professor Rivers, and turns out Joe was actually sent out by Sarah Jane to the ancient temple to investigate the trickster's myths across the world. And the Pharisees' labs would have fully analysed Sky's electrical powers, just in time for Ronnie and Clyde to make it back to Bandman Road and tell Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane would have gotten Sky to turn good for just enough time for her to blast the trickster away for good. And this time, the show actually meant for good. Banishing the trickster would have gotten rid of Sky as well, as she would have elevated to her final form, a magical, angelic figure infused with all of Sarah Jane's wisdom and compassion, who would stand watch over the dimensions forever, keeping the trickster locked away for all eternity and standing over the prison for the rest of time. There would have been a final goodbye though from the child Sky to Sarah Jane, and then she would have ascended, leaving the trickster trapped forever. And it would have ended with Bannerman Road being destroyed, or maybe not, but Clyde and Ronnie would have finally been together. Maybe they would have walked off together and left Sarah Jane alone, or maybe they would have stayed and there would have been a final heroic shot of the main gang together outside of Bannerman Road, just waiting for their next adventure to come. This honestly sounds like the most amazing ending to this show. But what was next to come? Join me for part two, where we'll discuss the stories that were never told. But for now, we can all just try and imagine that epic finale that could have happened. A truly cinematic event for the greatest show ever. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you have, why not maybe giving it a like, and maybe even consider subscribing. But either way, thank you so much for watching this video, and rest in peace, Elizabeth Sladen.